this is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope that uh, this day is one, if depending on when you're listening to this, is filled with a lot of joy and laughter and that you're just surrounded by friends and family. You know, if you're here in the United States, you know, Thanksgiving is kind of the official kickoff to the holidays. And um, I know for me, um, as I'm recording this a little ahead of time, but on Thanksgiving Day, I'm going to be with my family at uh, our place over in North Carolina on Lake Lure. And, um, you know, I always look forward to that despite the chaos. It's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, that it's going to be chaotic, but we all love it anyway. And um, it's just f- so fun to get reconnect with family and just, you know, be with each other. And so, um, you know, I think that's just really, when it comes down to it, that's one of the most important parts of life. You know, um, we think about Thanksgiving as being a time of gratitude and just kind of pausing and remembering uh, remembering the things that we're grateful for. You know, it's also uh, a time of gluttony, if you will, uh, in that we get to do one of my favorite things, which is to eat and just have this big, uh, heavy meal. And, um, you know, it's just fun. It's just fun. And uh, but I realize at the same time, there are a lot of folks out there that, you know, the holiday season is not so fun for them. In other words, it brings up a lot of bad, bad memories or maybe they're isolated in some way and they are um, um, not able to get with family or getting with family is just too painful of a process to take part in. Um So, you know, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is maybe reach out to some of those people in your community uh, of maybe looking at what you can do to to maybe pull some people in. I know uh, one of the things that goes on at our church every year, or one of the churches that I'm affiliated with, is we have a Christmas dinner and uh, it's open to the community. And so people from all over the community, regardless of their background, just get together and we sit down and have a meal together. And I think that just goes a long way with really helping us know what it means to be grateful for what we have. You know, it's real easy in this day and time, particularly with the politics that's going on and all the rhetoric that we hear It's so easy to get pulled into that cynicism and just some bitterness that I see going on in the world. And, um, you know, I choose not to live that way. And I hope that's the way that's the way for you as well. And I think the other thing that I want to say about gratitude or things that I'm grateful for is I'm really grateful for you, especially if you're in this field, going into this this tough field of sitting down with people and doing therapy, doing counseling, doing anything in this mental health field is tough work. We see and hear so many difficult things that we have to carry. And so I would encourage you to take care of yourself, to practice some compassion and kindness towards yourself. And also to uh, those of us or those others that are around us. You know, um, one of the things that I did this past week was, um, was at the, I got to go to the AAMFT conference up in Louisville, Kentucky. And, um, I think this was the first time I've been to the national conference, but one of the things that is so, uh, great about those conferences is that we get to hear people that, um, get to hear talks and keynoters and people that just inspire us and motivate us in different ways. You know, I think for us therapist types, it's so, it's nice to be able to kind of go and geek out on, on research and therapeutic topics and all the, the latest stuff going on in our fields. Um, you know, it's just fun to do that. But I think more than, more importantly, is just, just a way to connect with colleagues It's a way to connect with like-minded people that are working on the same things. Um, 
I got to uh, spend some time with Perry Rosenblum from Brighter Visions. Uh, he's the he's also the person behind the Therapist Experience podcast, and we're going to be doing a podcast exchange here soon. And so uh, I'm going to have Perry on this podcast, and then he's so graciously invited me to be on the Therapist Experience podcast. And so I'm really looking forward to that and being part of that. Uh, part of that process. The other thing too, I'll mention, and I'm I'll probably mention in the intro, um, is that the Brighter Visions is um, doing a uh, best of series again this year. So um, they have nominated me again for the best uh, the best therapy blog, um, which I'm just totally flattered. But I'll have a link in the show notes to to be able to go in and do your take your vote of the best of for 2018 and then I'm going to announce the winners and in, um, uh, in, in sometime in December of 2018. So uh, that, I would invite you to go over and take a look at that. But anyway, what I, where I was going with all of this is just the importance of connecting and, and being real intentional about that. As you've heard me say a lot, before, you know, going into private practice, particularly if you're in solo private practice, it can be a lonely place. And, um, you know, um, one of the things that I have valued so much and, again, very grateful for are those relationships that I've been able to forge in in this work. And, um, you know, going to a conference like the AAMFT conference just um, allows you to connect in ways and just really feel very affirmed about what I'm doing, or at least I felt very, it was very affirming to hear that the work that I'm doing with clients is is the right kind of work, and that I'm doing, what I'm doing is the right stuff, uh, just based on research and evidence-based practices and all of those kinds of things. So I would really encourage you to, if you're not involved with your professional organization, to maybe consider doing that. Uh, number one, it's going to give you an excellent way to um, network with other colleagues, other like-minded colleagues. Um, the other thing, too, that most people are not aware of, you know, I'm, I'm on the board for the Tennessee Marriage and Family Therapy Association. And one of the big things that we do behind the scenes is advocacy work around our profession. Um, here recently, I think it was in the state of Texas, there was a, a push by, uh, I think it was the American Medical Association, to do away with the LPC license and the, the MFT license in the state of Texas, and that, uh, and that they wanted to limit the ability to give diagnoses. And the problem with that, of course, is uh, for those of us that are on insurance panels and accept insurance, we depend on being able to give a diagnosis in, so in order for insurance to pay. But a lot of that legislation was kind of cut off at the pass because of the work of the various mental health provider associations, you know, the Texas Marriage and Family Therapy Association, also the AAMFT uh, uh, was involved with that, uh, working on that and getting lobbyists to kind of change that around. Um, I know that the LPC, the American Counseling Association, ACA, was involved in that as well. But that is the value of being in, uh, not only in being able to network with other colleagues, but being able to support your local organizations to be able to do the advocacy work for the profession. You know, there are some states that are pushing to do away with um, some of the licensing for for our profession, and and that would just be um, that would be detrimental and just be devastating for us and our profession. So, get out there and join your local organization, your state organizations, and the national organizations. Um, um, I think it, it's just a good way to to kind of help with that and really show, um, again, this theme of gratitude, uh, show some gratitude towards your profession in that way and just helping um, being involved in that way. Um, you know, the other thing that happened at the conference that was just very, very moving for me uh, was um, I learned about a group of students 
high school students in um, Oxford, Michigan. And there was, um, I'm going to get the, make sure it's in the um, show notes here, the interview that was done by ABC News with these students. But uh, for those of you, the some of you might be re- uh, uh, be familiar with the Netflix series called 13 Reasons Why. And it's a series around teen suicide. And it's a, it's basically a story of a teenager, uh, that is basically bullied at school, kind of ostracized or, um, really gets caught up in a lot of uh, peer pressure, so to speak. And, uh, through social media and that sort of thing, I need to watch the series, but I, what I know it's going to be a hard series to watch, but ultimately they kind of not to kind of spoil spoiler alert here. The series ends with the, with the student, the child, the youth rather committing suicide, very disturbing kind of thing. But anyway, this, these, a group of high school students along with a counselor at school decided to, um, do a project that they called 13 Reasons Why Not. And um, basically what they did, um, they, were, they were starting to have some serial suicides in their, in their high school where uh, one particular student had committed suicide and they were starting to get some copycat um, things, which again is just a horrific thing to happen but these students banded together, and they started telling their own stories. And so what they did is they recorded their own struggles with um, feeling depressed, feeling uh, not wanted, being bullied in school, and just putting it out there. And believe it or not, it just absolutely transformed that school. And it was just so moving and so humbling to hear those teenager stories um two two that shared uh their names and i'm sure they'll they'll be okay with uh sharing their names because they're out there <laughs> they're out there on youtube and everywhere else but it was riley Jun- uh, junty and dylan Koss. Uh, were two of the people. I'm, Riley, if you're listening to this, I hope I sp- pronounced your last name correctly. But anyway, um, just to hear their story, stories and to hear their vulnerability was just so moving and inspiring to me. And in fact, so much so that I'm, I'm going to be talking with some school administrators and things here in my community to see what we can do to maybe do something similar to what they did to really kind of prevent teenage suicide uh, within our communities. You know that one statistic is is that uh, suicide is the second largest reason for death among teens here in the United States, and that's just staggering. And I know we know that because we're working in the field. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a link to the video in the show notes here on YouTube and just commend that to you to look at uh, just because it's very moving and it's very inspirational to see the difference that these these kids, just ordinary kids, uh, did to, to turn things around in their community. And I would encourage you to do the same. You know, one of the things, and I think I might have mentioned this already, but, you know, what we do day in and day out is hard work. Um, What we do is noble work. And what you're doing is making such a huge difference in people's lives. We might not see right away the seeds that we plant for people, but you're making a difference in people's lives. And I think it's important to um, be able to keep your eye on that. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is just um, being able to rally around that with each other. You know, we've got so much to be grateful for here, um, just here in, I guess, in a way, the first world, you know, speaking mainly of the United States and Canada. Uh, not that we're first in anything, but um, the fact that we are so privileged to have all that we have. I mean, we don't, for most of us, probably most of you out there listening to this, we don't have to worry about where our next meal is coming from. We don't have to worry about the roof over our head. We don't have to worry about all of those things. And I just want to remind you to be grateful for that. 
just to be aware of the fact that we're privileged to have those things. Um, you know, my heart goes out during this holiday season to the folks out in Paradise, California. My family has been touched by that tragedy and that I've got an uncle that lived there close to Paradise. Uh, they were not hurt, but their house was destroyed. And it's just heart-wrenching to hear those stories. So heart thoughts and prayers go out to those people facing what the, the natural disasters they face there. And the other, you know, the other things that have been going on in the news with the shootings and those kinds of things, again, thoughts and prayers to those folks. Um, so where was I going with all of this? I guess really my kind of my message to you all during this Thanksgiving season and the holiday season is to be grateful for what you have. And I'm very grateful of you and very appreciative of you of going into this profession and doing what you do uh, because it is hard work. And I'm so grateful that you're listening to the podcast and that you're uh, supporting me in this. And uh, my, my hope, as I've always said, is that this information is helpful and that you're in some way inspired or motivated to do great things in the world because I think you can do it. And uh, going into private practice has been one of the greatest things I've ever done, and I want to share that with others and being able to enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride, and just be out there and um, do great things. You can do it. So thanks, folks, for joining me in this uh, short little thing. I um, just was thinking about all of you listening out there and really wanting to share with you just uh, maybe some thoughts and the things that I'm thankful for. Hopefully this wasn't too much of a downer for you, but I just uh, those things are on my mind and just felt compelled to share them with you. So take care, folks. Got some a great episodes lined up here in the future. As I mentioned, I've got uh, Perry Rosenblum uh, from Brighter Visions that's going to be joining me. I still got, have got to get Cecilia Br Brasino with me uh, to talk about her immigration um testing and the great thing she's doing around that. I'm um, trying to remember some of the other guests. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but we've got some great episodes um, coming up. Well, folks, thanks again for joining me in this short little Thanksgiving episode of the Practice of Therapy podcast. And uh, thanks for listening to me just kind of share my thoughts. And hopefully this wasn't too terribly heavy. Um, but anyway, it was just I, I, it come, I bring this to you just out of sincerity and just really, um, really true what truly mean what I what I say about all the stuff that I said. Um, do take the time to go over and vote. Uh for us at the best of uh, therapy resources that Brighter Visions is hosting, uh, is sponsoring this year. Um, you'll get a link in the show notes here to the survey where you can go through and uh, vote on the different categories. Uh, the Practice of Therapy has been nominated for the uh, one of the the best of uh, therapy blogs. So uh, I'm just grateful that they uh, uh, nominate me for that. So go in there and vote for your favorite things in that and uh, um, help us out. That's uh, quite an honor that they've asked me to do this. And as I mentioned, Perry Rosenblum from the from Brighter Vision is uh, going to be joining me later. And uh, do check out Brighter Vision. I'll put in a plug here for them. They are great folks and they know what they're doing around uh, practice websites and know how to do that. And again, if you'll go to practiceoftherapy.com slash Brighter Vision, that way you can get one month three free by using the coupon code Gordon that's over at the practice of therapy uh, dot com slash brighter vision. Well, take care, folks. And again, happy Thanksgiving. And as I said, I hope that your your days here during this holiday season are filled with a lot of joy and laughter and warmth and being with those that you love the most. And um We'll be tuning in with you next week and look forward to chatting with you then. Take care, folks.
You have been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. Please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information, resources, and tools to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. If you haven't already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.